All right guys, so in this video we have a load of things to talk about. We have transmission fluid. I just went and bought transmission fluid. Uh, Pennzoil Synchro Mesh, best transmission fluid I could ever say in an NV5600 because mine lasted 549,000 miles before sixth gear exploded. Apparently there is a remedy to this sixth gear. We can go get some PTO uh, added on coolers. Apparently they help greatly with keeping sixth gear cool and then we don't have that issue. But mine still lasted very, very long and I've been running Pennzoil Synchro Mesh without ever adding any more than six quarts. And it's been great. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna work on the exhaust brake today. I also went and got, went and got some RTV. I got a whole assortment of grease fittings for the trailer and I went and got hose clamps because we're gonna redo this whole concoction here I found a better way to do the cable on the exhaust brake on the other side I can pull the cable downward and it should give me a little bit more momentum we just need we do need to come up with a handle at some point but I have parked on a little bit of a hill because the best way to drain the fluid is through the PTO cover I could not find another fuel filter I need to go get one of them I also went and got hose clamps because we have a little bit of a coolant leak so not a big deal this is what happens you know you spend Sunday doing your pre-trip so I can go over anything wrong with the truck and I, I found you know I found a little drip uh, this hose right here decided you know what it uh, it, it it doesn't want to hold a seal not a big deal I fired a truck up this morning I saw drip drip drip, drip. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna replace the hose clamps on that. The Remflex gaskets will be here Thursday and then the battery terminal will be here tomorrow so we can get rid of this janky half-assed rigged pile of crap. Just need some hose clamps and well, yeah, we just we just need to go over some of this stuff today. All good, well and good. Um, let's talk about rates real quick. I have been looking on Central Dispatch. There hasn't been really anything good coming back from New Jersey going to Pittsburgh and there have been a couple other shitty things and I'm realizing with way the fuel prices are, if there is no good loads, I'm not gonna book anything. It's, it's gonna be simple as that. There is so many good things out in Pittsburgh that I can come back to New Jersey. Yes, it's gonna cut my income down a little bit, but I'm gonna be spending less on doing cheap loads. I refuse to do cheap loads anymore with these ridiculous fuel prices. It's like 4.58 for diesel where I'm at and then you gotta factor in the turnpike and all that, it's just, it is not worth it. So we'll get everything situated here. Just throw the grease fittings in. These two have grease fittings. I need to do the grease fittings on the other side. Let's get into that. I'm gonna show you guys what we are working on and we'll go from there. Let me show you. I went and got a bucket so that I can drain my transmission into there. No, we will not be running waste oil until I get a new setup that allows me to do that. I want to clean the stuff before it actually goes in. But this is the stuff I've been running. Six quarts of this. Yes, you do have to add the sixth quart. If you do not add the sixth quart, you will probably burn sixth gear or the rest of the transmission out if you're heavy towing. Always add that sixth quart. Basically to do that, it's impossible if you're using the PTO cover, you have to pull the shifter off. So I'm gonna be pulling all of this off today and getting in there. So should be super simple, but now that we are done, no more lollygagging, let's get into the real mess of things. So it is nice today. Down at the bottom of this hose, it looks like there's a little puddle. So we're gonna get that. They're like eight millimeter. So I'm gonna screw that in quick. Hopefully we can get rid of that coolant leak and we'll go from there. All right, let's get in here. You guys can see there is the culprit right there. It is leaking from the hose right there. Um, and it is leaking from the top of it. You can tell it's leaking from the top because there's a little puddle up top and then one down below. So we'll get that taken care of and we should be all right. All right, so while we're working in here and getting this thing in and done, there are a lot of people that seem to worry about what I spend my time on and like what I actually do with my time. And too many people worry about something that's just honestly none of their business or concern. And that's what being financially free allows you to do. That's why I like this older truck. I like the older setup because if one day I just decide to up and stop working, there's nothing that needs done. There is, like, I don't need to keep making payments on something. Like, it's all simple and cheap. Whereas if you go and buy a new setup, the payments don't stop. You have to keep going. My insurance is $320 a month. It's not super expensive. That's why I don't worry about working or getting things done on certain days. It's like super cold 
Yesterday it was like 15 degrees and windy as but We're getting that. We'll see, I'm gonna spray that with some brake cleaner and we'll see if we get rid of that leak. But yeah, that's what financial freedom lets you do. Like, I know that I have a little bit of debt, but at the end of the day, why you don't want it, like I wanna be paid off by October 8th, but the reason you don't wanna like, I could go pay off my trailer right now. I owe 1,750 bucks on it. But right now I have 1,750 bucks that's chilling, making me money elsewhere, making me more money that it's physically costing me to pay that trailer off now, like things like that. So use your debt to make money. My goal is to be debt free by October 8th by my wedding. So in the meantime, that money that I'm, I'm accruing while not paying the debt off is making money right now. So start buying these dips, people. I'm telling you what, in the next couple of years, there is going to be thousands of millionaires, if not billionaires, because people have been investing very smartly. You see a dip, buy the shit out of that dip. I don't care who you are. Do your research on the project you invest in first though. I'll tell you that. Do your research first, then buy the dip. All right, so we found the issue. I actually had to go and cut. I had to cut it because there was actually a slice. You can see it right there. There was a slice in the hose. So this is something that does happen. Uh, hose clamps are not exactly the best things in the world, but over time they cut the hose, so we should be good now. I'm gonna get the coolant filled back up. We drained whatever we could into the bucket and then back in there. I wanted to do this first because at least the coolant I could recycle, the trans fluid we're not gonna recycle. But hopefully, hopefully we're good for a little while. We'll get that filled back up. We shouldn't have any more leaks. And yeah, so I wanna let you guys, I wanna get your guys' opinion on this. The whole like wedge trailer debate. So I've been sharing uh, a couple of photos lately. Wedge trailers and showing you guys what can happen and like if they're cross loaded. And a couple of people think that that's me bashing them whereas yes these people do deserve to get bashed for rolling a wedge trailer because of their own stupidity if you only put one strap on a, a on a car and then you drive down the road and you're speeding and you crash yes you absolutely deserve to get bashed no that was not the point the point was to save lives and put information out there but you do get some people that are just blatantly stupid and they side with these idiots that crash and they do things that are going to damage other people's property like I'm gonna show you guys. I've hauled at least in the four digits worth of cars now. I used to be a tow truck driver. Look at this. Strap, strap. Every car has every strap that I can possibly put on it. There's a strap here, strap here. That's four tie down points. This one has three because obviously you can't put a strap on a wheel that just is jammed up against the body. But these guys, this dude, I shared a picture and the guy had the strap wrapped around the bottom part of the wheel and then pulled backwards. One car. Then the second one, the ram that was rolled over off to the side. I'll post the pictures up. This thing was rolled off to the side, just damn near on the sidewalk. Like, dude could have killed somebody on that. And you actually have people that are so wrong in the head that they will side with these people. And you'll have other guys that'll argue oh well, he's a non-cdl guy just like you no this is a cdl setup that picture that i shared it was a 14k dually with a 21k trailer 100 percent. that's a cdl setup there is you if you're derating a 21,000 pound trailer down to 12k you're nuts this was a cdl setup 100 percent guy didn't have experience guy was also not only did he not have experience he was also lazy he cut corners in ways that were just not wedge trailers are not forgiving trailers you can't you can't do it no straps on him not only did he have just enough strap to get it just to roll over and fall off but if he would have had all the straps on it he would have still rolled it the way that he had it because he had one car all the way on top and the truck way in front of the axles I'm gonna keep preaching it. Wedge trailers are dangerous because of the fact that people are just so lazy. They don't wanna learn. It's just it's just the point. So please stop, please stop with these wedge trailers. I'm tired of seeing people get hurt. I'm tired of seeing brand new trucks get wrecked. You get an $80,000 truck and you're gonna wreck that shit. I've been running this thing for years and I don't wanna wreck it. It's like, could you imagine? Dude, I couldn't imagine having a truck that expensive and then just the whole bedside was destroyed, so. Right, let's uh, let's go to draining the NV5600. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. You guys can see 
This is the first oil change I'm doing on it. So the PTO cover right there, you want to get the rear of the truck. You wanna get the rear of the truck as high as possible. So I am on a downhill slope right there. Now we'll be able to drain that. And then the factory calls for five quarts. There's a reason a lot of these things were prematurely wearing was because of that reason right there was that they were only five quarts of capacity. You need to put the sixth quart of capacity for the main bearings and that sixth gear. I know people have mentioned to me that the six gears in this truck do have tendency to fail if you hold them. There is ways around it. You do need to add that sixth quart. And if you're gonna be towing heavy from what I'm seeing, you can add a PTO cover. So let's see if we can't get this transmission to last longer than 549,000 miles. So we'll get some transmission PTO covers. Uh, goodness, with my beanie. Get some transmission PTO coolers at some point and let's see if, if those make a difference. I think it moves it up to like seven and a half, eight quarts. Uh, and we'll see if it makes a difference. All right, so I know it's dark. I do wanna see how this fluid comes out and what it looks like after, I don't even know how many miles I've put on it to tell you the truth, 549, I'm at five, so I'd probably put like 8,000 miles on it. Oh, look at that. No metal, doesn't look like, it looks pretty clean. It's not like super dark. I used to do mine at like 50,000 and it came out like brand new looking. Obviously this transmission has been sitting for a long time, so I'm not doing it at 50,000, but I do want to get as much, uh, I, I do want to get as much maintenance on this thing as possible. But those PTO coolers, they bolt to this thing here. Uh, you basically pull this off and then it comes here and then there's a new cover on it and then you can add temperature sensors and all that. So. You guys can also see this is a two-wheel drive transmission. There is no transfer case back behind there. Reliable, super reliable at its finest. Front pumpkin is gutted. There is nothing in that. So we'll let that drain, and then all I got to do is pretty much put this bolt back in, and we'll go from there. There's no leaks out the back seal. You want to check and see if your drive shaft is wet. Mine's only wet because of, you know, a little bit of oil leaks uh, from the front main but we'll get the front main changed out at some point. The reason it's taken me so long on the front main is because I don't have room in the shop. I cannot work in the shop. They have a paint booth right now. So working on painting and stuff, which is a good thing because we're working on a paint booth. So I'll be able to actually get my truck painted here in the next couple of months. We have the setup for it now. So these PTO covers also as well, the ones that come out to like here, they have a window so you can actually see when your transmission's full. There's really no way to check these things other than you have to pull this top bolt out and then if some leaks out then you know but this is where the factory fill hole is and that is you can see like super low you want the factory fill to be above this hole here so this is terrible that was why a lot of these transmissions were failing all right so we got all of it down there i mean it's not the worst thing in the world might be a little bit of metal but a little bit is better than a lot so it's a transmission hopefully it runs for a very long time i do need we'll get this all of this off i'm gonna redo a lot of this and try to make something that's easily grabbed um, and in the experiment phase so basically what i got going on right now is i've doubled up the springs because it definitely needs more spring pressure pulling the veins closed because there was a lot more in it. So like when I was pulling the throttle cable, it would spool more. I feel like that'll help a lot. I do need to find a way to put a spring uh, to get this kicked out of exhaust brake. So when we're not using the exhaust brake, at least it's not stuck in that position. Uh, I need to find a place to mount this with a hose clamp because obviously hose clamps are a lot stronger than uh, your typical zip ties. Then this will open and close. So hopefully we get a lot more functionality out of the VGT. All right, so to correctly change fluid in an NV5600, you gotta take this off, it's three screws, and it slides in. And then this is a bunch of eight millimeter bolts. One, two, three, four, five, six of them all up here. That's what they look like. And then there is four 10 millimeter bolts right here. Well, I think they're three eighths, because I'm pretty sure they're three eighths, because when I use a 10 millimeter, it does want to spin sometimes like this one here. That one just spins. <sighs> yeah, so we'll get them three eighths, if not 10 millimeter, try one or the other. If it tries to spin on you and strip, it's cause it's a three eighths. 
All right, here's what she looks like underneath. You can choose to take this off or not. Um, the gasket parts up on the top, the bottom you have to RTV. Considering that this is still stuck in place, I don't think I'm gonna move it and I'm just gonna leave the gasket how it is. And there doesn't appear to be any metal in the shifter tower. You'll know this transmission's screwed when there's a bunch of metal in the top here. That's a sure sign. So, like I said, best fluid you can possibly get for these things, in my opinion things last forever so we're just gonna dump all six quarts into that hole and throw the shifter back on and then figure out how we want to mount before I throw everything back together I'm gonna get the shifter on but then I'm gonna figure out how to mount like all this and I want to do a different style handle because obviously that's it was stupid it was just to test it so all right we got all six quarts in basically all you're gonna do is take this bottom guy here and we'll set it right into place not gonna have to worry too much because it's a rubber material so it's gonna self seal but if you do take that bottom piece off you are gonna need to throw some RTV on it it's just the nature of it but there you go all right so phase two with this thing I'm trying to get it as clean as possible so you guys can see when I welded that nut on there that makes a perfect housing for that thing to sit and it doesn't need to go far when i turn it on it does it is able to kick itself out of exhaust brake and i am able to use this cable to push on it to kick it out of exhaust brake as well so that's actually quite neat so this will function have two functions to it so that is great now i do need to find out how i want to uh, do the grommet for this not sure we're gonna we're gonna try to see i need to get this hose clamp off and then i'm gonna try to run this as cleanly as possible and we'll go from there. I don't know how I'm gonna do it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it and we'll snap back into it here in a minute. All right, so we are pretty much, you know, right there. I think it looks pretty good. We have our hose clamp around it, obviously to keep it tight. It's forced up in here, locked in here. I have it run under the truck. Now the only issue is it's actually too long. Um, if I could pull this thing up, you guys can see just how long it is. So I gotta find a way I wanted to put it somewhere where I could actually mount it and like put this into something and then this grommet obviously going into a hole. So I don't exactly know how I want to do this yet. I am uh, still still trying to figure it out. I may try to pull this off and put this on actually the other way just because of how I did it. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see. Going through my little scrap box here, we're going to try to figure something out. And I'll move this in the meantime. But trying to make it as easy as possible until we get the air set up, I would like this to at least work and you know work decently well since a number of you guys were the ones that suggested me running a cable. So you guys got me thinking about mechanical advantage and whatnot. So came up with this contraption. We have a bracket here. We have one of those clips from what we're gonna be using on the trailer. So let's see if this works a lot better. So basically, for one, we'll start it in neutral. Oh, it helps to turn the fuel on. Okay. So we can have the exhaust brake off. Look, high RPMs. Look at that. comes off so basically to activate the exhaust brake cool so it works pretty well and it's a lot easier on the hands basically if I just want to activate the exhaust brake I just come over here and I'm like eh, whatever And then turn it off with a brat. Cool. So we'll give this thing a few days worth of testing. Um, definitely should be a lot easier on the hands. All right, so we are gonna go take our grease fittings. Cause I said I was gonna do this last week. I never got around to it. So we'll throw our grease fittings in now. And let's see, I got these at AutoZone. So we'll see what do we need 
I want a 45. Let's see. Let's see if it goes in there. This one had like a big hole for some reason. So I just kind of went and grabbed the whole kit. All right, we got there. There's that one. And then there's that one. We just got to throw some grease in them because you should grease your equalizers. I heard someone make mention that you should grease them like every other trip, I guess, something like that. Um, I forget, like, I forget what the actual number was, but those bolts in there are pretty beefy. So we'll at least, we'll at least have them now. So we're gonna get cleaned up. Everything works as it should. I'm actually really happy with how it came out. I just need to cut this tie. But now there's two springs, so we shouldn't have to worry about exhaust pressure and whatnot. Hopefully it spools a lot faster. And hopefully that cable limits it a little bit. Because if it can limit it, then we can also get a little bit more boost out of it. So I want to try and get 40 PSI out of this turbo. So we'll see how it goes. All right, so now we're going to get to test this thing. Hopefully it all goes well, because it would be really cool to be able to use it. No, I said I know I don't recommend it. Um, so this will hopefully work great. Now, if anything, we can adjust it and whatnot. So this is kind of the mechanical advantage you guys were talking about on here. Thanks, Joel, for suggesting it. But, I mean, it doesn't look the greatest, but it definitely is going to function pretty well. And if not, we can just readjust it. So, let me get out of the sunlight here because... Okay, so it works very well. Sorry about the sunlight. I'm going to back back up this hill. And I'll have, uh... I may have Liam film it. But, like... Let's see. Hopefully, don't back into anything. Here. Well, you know what? That's a bad idea because Liam will be facing right into the sun. So I'm going to put her into second right there. You guys can see. Put down the back window so you guys can kind of get a little bit better of a hearing. Basically, like, it, it needs to work because pulling three cars, and grades and everything, it's kind of nice to have the exhaust brake. So I'll let you guys... That works very well. I can't wait to get the new exhaust manifold gaskets in. Listen to that. play with this here for a minute. Let me get Liam out. Come here, Liam. This, <laughs> I'm gonna have too much fun with this going down the road. It's been, I can't wait till we do air because it's gonna get even more fun. But here, Liam. what that sounded like but i'm telling you what like this was definitely worth wasting a sunday afternoon on at, in 37 degrees Daddy, can I? super <laughs> excited super excited to actually get to use this and yeah that's it's kind of neat so we'll get to use it in town we'll go from there so we got the coolant leak fixed we got the transmission fluid changed and we have a fully functioning exhaust brake It actually works. And it kicks itself out like it's supposed to when you click the lever down. Here, Liam, I need you to film. All right. There may be some adjustments to be made, but let's see.
you guys actually think of that um i'm sure i'm gonna get the comment oh it's rigged it's this it's that who gives a shit if it works it's awesome but listen to this Extra spring. Woo. Okay. 
So we'll get to try this out uh, tomorrow when I am out when I'm out working on uh, dropping off three cars in New Jersey. I still gotta book something back, but if there's something cheap on there, I'm not gonna grab it just for shits and giggles. Uh, if there is something coming back that'll bring me home or out towards like the Pittsburgh area, then sure, maybe I'll go for a little bit lower, but I'm not I'm not gonna do like anything crazy cheap. Look at this, we got the exhaust brake going. Works great. Works just great, didn't need to touch the brakes at all. So hope you guys enjoyed. As always, end of the video, go check out my Amazon affiliate links. I get a kickback of anything down there. All we gotta do yet to the truck, I just gotta go get another fuel filter, not a big deal. So we'll do that probably tomorrow sometime if I can find one. But see you guys later.